How's it going? You might be wondering, where the hell have you been, man? Well, I took on a job that was uh, far from reasonable for me to do by myself and kind of just poured myself fully into it for the last month and a half. So the YouTube thing suffered as a result, but job's done, I'm back. And since that last video, you know, like four years ago, I've been really thinking a lot about it. Some of you guys pointed me to a video of uh, Marcus Kayser with the Solar Center Project, where he used a Fresnel lens to melt layers of glass and 3D print glass. That's just too cool, man. I think there's a lot of potential in this, uh, you know, using the sun to do work for us. And I kind of want to explore it more. So today we're going to be on the R&D side, if you will, I want to try a whole bunch of different ways of gathering energy from the sun and rank them. So let's do it. So in order to do that, I've got this very flushed out and sophisticated device. Basically, we got an Arduino with a thermocouple mounted to where it's touching one of the fins of this anodized aluminum heat sink. And I picked anodized aluminum because paint will just burn off if it gets too intense. The anodized, an anodization? I think this will stand up better to heat, and also aluminum is a great heat sink, so should be good. And I'll have this plugged into a computer to which we'll log all the data to a spreadsheet. Then we can make cool graphs and stuff. You know, that's like rule one of YouTube, man. And you gotta, gotta captivate the audience's attention with spreadsheets and graphs. Right, guys? I'm bad at this. <laughs> anyway, let's get a baseline test. I wanna test a lens similar to what I put on the CNC machine in the last video. All right, test number one. The focus isn't gonna be perfect because we are focusing using, well, blocks. Place that on there, start streaming data. So let's take a little look-see here. It seems this setup isn't great at measuring low power. I had to redo this test a couple times because if there was even a light breeze, the temperature would go down about as much as it would go up. So we gained about one degree Celsius over the span of a minute, which is not a heck of a lot of power, which makes sense if you remember in the last video how slow I had to run that machine to actually get it to engrave. Now. Take this with a big old grain of salt because my system here obviously has a lot of losses. We can plug our first reading and our final reading into this equation and figure out an approximate wattage for this. So it looks like with the magnifying glass we're getting about 0.9 watts of power, which makes sense. On to the next one. Well, that was lame. If we learned anything from that test, we may have just learned that this system is not great for measuring low power. But that's okay, because we're going to be cranking it up real quick. Uh, maybe there's some spoilers in the background, huh? <laughs> I'm a slob. But before we get too crazy, I do want to test this little pint-sized Fresnel lens. It's cheap. It'd be easy to build around. I think it'd be pretty sweet if this works well. But let's see. All right, here we are, semi-unfocused on the concrete, and it's already burning. So, here we go. Wow, would you look at that nice, smooth line. So it seems we gained about 11 degrees Celsius on this run, giving us approximately 7.95 watts of power. Um, questionable, to say the least, but I'll take it. So that's our two off-the-shelf items. To kick it up to the next level, I figured let's do that classic middle school science fair project. Make a solar cooker thing. Got a satellite dish, got some shiny tape, let's do this. Wow, would you look at that. I thought that was gonna take way longer. Granted, any 12 year old who's done this project before has done a better job than what I did here, but we don't want this to work too good. How am I supposed to put this on a CNC machine? Just doing this one because I'm hungry for more data. Whack some legs on it and give it a test. All right, we're all set up. As you can see, I've hot glued our little sensor to the focal point. I'm gonna turn this thing around and let's get that data. So it looks like we're veering towards an asymptote here, and it may be because the beam isn't quite as focused as the other methods, but 60 seconds isn't really enough time to figure that out for sure. Either way, we started at 33, ended at 46.5 for a total difference of 13.5. 
giving us an estimated wattage of 9.76. Wow, we've gotten some results. The cute little Fresnel lens actually seems like a pretty promising thing. We can get much more power out of this than the regular magnifying glass and still get a fairly fine point. Plus it's small and manageable. But this being a YouTube video, we're not all about results here. We gotta turn this thing up to 11. So I did what any rational person would do. I rented a U-Haul, went to the big city, and picked up every rear projection TV that I could find. Give me a second to tear these things down. We're gonna do a test with just one Fresnel lens. But then I wanna see if we can consolidate all of these into one big, ridiculous contraption. Give me a second to tear these down. Two hours later. Got the goods! So now just gotta make a little frame for these guys. And just like that, we've got a King Aranda video. Let's go run the test. Alrighty, got the Fresnel lens set up. Found the focal point with my precision pile of trash. Throw the sensor on and start streaming data. Well, that was a pretty substantial gain. So we had a total temperature gain of 23.5 degrees, which puts us at about 17 watts. And this is where I start to get a bit dubious of our whole setup here. YouTube is riddled with videos of these full-size Fresnel lenses. And when I see all the crazy stuff they're doing with them, I don't know about you, but I see more than 17 watts. Now, it could be that optical power rears its ugly little head differently, or more likely, my setup isn't that great. But I've already ran this test on all of my lenses, even if my numbers aren't perfect, they are good for comparing and contrasting within my tests. So, we're sticking with it. We're calling it 17 watts. Let's move on. We finally did the Fresnel lens thing. Look at me go, I'm a real YouTuber now. Now that's all fine and dandy. But the thing is, I've got two more. I think it's time we burn the house down. All right, so we've got a frame for each of the lenses and the focal length for these lenses is at 30 inches. And I did the math. That means each of these lenses has to be 133.14 something degrees apart so that the focal points meet in one spot. So, I made a bunch of brackets. So these will be attached to the frame on one side using riv nuts. Just like that. I know these probably aren't strong enough to hold at 133 degrees, but they feel strong. I don't wanna weld all these gussets on there. So we're gonna risk it. All right, now we just gotta do the same thing on the other side. It's a little difficult to film this big unwieldy thing. But here I'm taking the brackets and welding them to the other panel. That way we disassemble them just by taking these off and the brackets stay with this guy. I need my welding mat. Look at that monstrosity. My welding mask is out of batteries. There's just a big spot in the middle of my vision, you know. Still blocks all the harmful stuff though, right? I think. So, we've got our assembly. And this should make it so all three Fresnel lenses have the same focal point. The only problem with this is the sun is coming from one direction. So these two are gonna be very, very inefficient. So, I'm gonna attach some mirrors on the side. As if this wasn't enough of a monstrosity, let's Throw some more stuff on there. I've made some frames for the mirror plates. I'm gonna attach them using these piano hinges. Beautiful. In order to lock these at the desired angle, I cut this guy out on the plasma cutter. This goes right here. And I'm just gonna weld a bolt on the other side. Just like that. Then we can pick an angle, log it in place with the wing nut. Beautiful. Now just gotta do that to the other one. So to make the mirrors, this is my idea. Got me a puzzle. Pu got me a piece of wood. 
Got me a space blanket. I'm gonna see if I can glue this down on top of the wood fairly evenly, which I feel like is gonna be a lot harder than it seems. That could have gone better. Now the last thing I need to do, take our mirrors and mount them to the back, to the back of these guys. Look at that, beautiful. So now this piece goes on there, just like that, and it gets a bolt. If I did everything right, this piece will be vertical in the full assembly. Now I'm gonna put the lenses on, finish this thing up. It's all together. Looks pretty intimidating. And boy do I regret assembling this in here. Now we gotta take this and bring it out there. We're kinda waiting on a gap in the clouds right now. Hopefully we get that one instead of that one. Clouds seem to be moving north. And if we look to the south, I don't think it's in the cards for us today, guys. Damn you! Day two. All right, we out here. The sun is back up. It's a little bit windy, which makes me a bit concerned because this is basically a sail, but we're gonna give it a shot anyways. Let me get this thing set up. Yeah, my little Mylar mirrors weren't really working out too well, so I went ahead and I glued down two of the first surface mirrors from the TVs on top. Hello. So hopefully that works better. All right. I think that's as good as we're gonna get. I don't know how much power we're gonna be pulling from these two side ones because since they're sideways, the focal point is more of a focal line, <laughs> if you will. But only one way to find out. Let's do it. Oh, f that's hot. Well, would you look at that? We gained 44.5 degrees Celsius over a minute, putting us at 32.1 watts. While using three lenses didn't triple the output, it almost doubled it, which is pretty cool. Now I figure let's just leave that there till it melts. So I've let this thing go for like nearly 20 minutes and you can see the top, maybe you can't see it because it's overexposed. Taking a look at this chunk of aluminum, you can see it's all blistered up and all the anodization is gone. <laughs> so we got pretty dang hot, but you know, I think it was very optimistic to melt a heat sink on a breezy day. I feel like those fire bricks I put in there blocked more sun than wind. So. <laughs> They were a little bit counter, uh, counterproductive. Well, hello. It's the editing shot again. I feel it's appropriate to do the outro here rather than out there because I've actually looked at the data now, unlike that guy back there. But I gotta say, when I did the test with the three Fresnel lens, I was a little bit disappointed when I was outside because it didn't seem to be that much more substantial. But now, after looking at the numbers, it's pretty substantial. Now maybe not all that usable on a CNC machine, but maybe like a solar tracking furnace for melting aluminum? I don't know. Let me know if you want to see that. I got the lenses now. Now I also shot some footage with this thing, um, you know, melted pennies, blowing up glass. I don't think I'm gonna include it in the video because it's been done so many times before. If you want to see a different video, with someone using a Fresnel lens to melt crazy stuff, check out the Backyard Scientist or the OG, you know, Grant. I, I think they both did a better job than I would ever do and, you know, whatever. We're here to take readings, not to have fun. <laughs> but yeah, conclusion, I think tiny Fresnel lens on a CNC machine, big triple monstrosity on a furnace, be pretty cool. Let me know what you guys think. Either way, Happy to be back. If you like what you saw, leave a good old danger. Think about subscribing and thank you for watching. Feels weird filming in the house. <laughs>